Hello, everybody. Hello, Waves users, and welcome. So yesterday, uh, as you uh, know, we released a new bundle and a new plugin, both of which are very, very exciting for an awful lot of people in the audio industry. Firstly, we did introduce a great new bundle called the Content Creator Audio Toolkit. Now, the cool thing about this is it's beneficial for everybody from professional broadcasters all the way to those of you who are starting your first podcasts and learning now in this brave new world that we find ourselves in and this new normal how to stream um, and uh, what to stream and how to make things sound good. Now, uh, this is coming from uh, two home studios and um, obviously we're at home because like you, we're all self-quarantined and we're socially distancing. Um, so this, like other internet connections, is maybe at your end going to black out at some point. So please just refresh the page and everything should be golden again. I know I'm good and my friend that I'm about to introduce is good as well. So first up, Let's just take a quick look at what it is that we're actually releasing and what we're going to be talking about. So let's take a quick look at the bundle. As a podcaster, YouTuber, or content creator, you want to sound like this. But you often find yourself sounding like this. And your guests sounding like this. Here's how you can go from this to this in four easy steps using the Waves Content Creator Audio Toolkit. Clean background noise with the Waves NS1 plugin. Make your voice sound better with Waves Voice Centric. Got multiple audio clips in your production? Get them all sounding smooth with Playlist Rider. Meet loudness standards for podcasting and YouTube with the WLM Plus meter. Voila! Great sounding audio for your podcast or video, all done easily with the Waves Content Creator Audio Toolkit. Now, go create something amazing. Let me just move over here. And Ryan, are you there? I'm here. How are you, Michael? Hey, man. How are you? Good to see you on this Good. wonderful day. So you. you're in Orlando, am I correct? Sunny Orlando, Florida. Sunny Orlando, Florida. So, And you're in your home studio. I'm in mine. Um, so you are the newest uh, introduction to the Waves product specialists. So let's talk a bit just quickly so I can introduce you to the world because I've been around a long time in this company. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, get a quick background on you and that's going to help us explain why I'm talking to you today in relation to this bundle. Yeah, well, again, my name is Ryan and more specifically for about the past nine or so years, I've been working full-time audio post-production up until joining waves so audio post-production being anything that you hear along with visuals and or things like podcasts so whether it's dialogue anything under that realm uh been doing for nearly a decade uh before that i went to berkeley college of music got my degree in music production and engineering uh so yeah that's a little bit about my background that's cool. So, well, we're certainly glad to have you. Now, when it comes to the content creator audio toolkit, let's talk for a second about uh, who you think this is for. Like, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it can be for anybody from, you know, really professional broadcast companies all the way right. down to the guy who's just beginning. Is that about right? 100%. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of our marketing and promotional thing kind of show this in vain of audio podcast, but it's more than just that too. It's whether you're doing audio for video or just even simple music. We've got four plugins here in this bundle that are what I like to just say dummy proof. They make it streamlined so you can just get to it a lot quicker. You don't have to worry about fumbling with choosing certain EQs, automation. Uh, it makes it a way more streamlined process for you. So whether you are a beginner and you just don't know what to do or you're more advanced and you're just looking to save some time this has it for you 
All right, so let's dig in right now. So first things first, um, this obviously has a few plugins in it that are uh, ones that have been around for a while and one very, very new one. So let's go first to the uh, one of the, the, the ones that is one of my favorite plugins. Let's talk first about NS1. So talk to me about NS1. As somebody who is needing to clean up their audio and isn't in the best surrounding environments, um, what's good about this plugin? Right, NS1, NS standing for noise suppressor. Uh, it's it's great in that, yeah, you sometimes have audio clips. Someone's talking uh, and the location that they're in is less than ideal for the tone that you want, whether it be in your video or podcast. Um, it would be great to do something about that. Now, there are many other noise reduction things, but they're so complicated. The beauty about the NS1 as there's one fader. It's just as simple as that. It's a matter of sliding it up to find that blend and voila, that noise, that ambience is gone. A little note too, this is more so for the consistent noises, your, your air vent, your steady uh, wind in the background of environment, maybe some subtle room echo. If you got a car honk in the background, it's not magically going to disappear. You're uh, actually using it right now, if I recall from the conversation before we started this. Indeed, uh, I am. Yeah. This headset mic has an NS1 on the front end of it. So when I stop talking any of the air conditioner in my apartment, you shouldn't be able to hear that. So before we go on, I do want to say there is a discussion underneath this video. Uh, we can't see it. However, we do have a team of people who are there monitoring any of the questions that you're asking. So please ask away. Um, I'm going to talk with Ryan about a lot of the questions. I know a lot of people will want to know, but we do hopefully want to get to some of your questions as well. Okay, Ryan, go for it. Ryan. NS1, let's dig in. So let's take a listen to this. Right now I have a clip of audio from a location where someone's talking, there's a lot of uh, room tone noise and then some slight echo. Let me play the clip for you with the NS1 bypass so you get an example of what it sounds like naturally. Um, I think in our generation, the influence of our parents may not have been quite as much as it is now. I think that there's a lot of parental involvement now. So you can hear in there just some dreary air noise when she talks, there's some room decay. Now let's engage the NS1 and then you're gonna see me just slide up this fader and you'll instant instantaneously hear that room noise die down. The, the greater that I rise up this fader here, you might hear some of that room decay die down and hear the vocal just kind of get nice and tight, kind of right in front of you as if- Do it instead of watching from a distance. Here we go. Um, I think in wow. our generation, the influence of our parents may not have been quite as much as it is now. I think that there's a lot of parental involvement now. Um, I think that's pretty impressive because it doesn't right. even sound like it's compressing it really or, or processing at it all. It gives a very, very transparent and, and with one fader, you, you can't get much simpler than that. Right. And like I said earlier, it's easy. It's, you know, you're working fast. You're in a timeline. You're in a crunch. You just need to throw something on for that quick fix and not have time to learn, analyze background noise. You throw this on, throw up the fader, move on. Yeah, well, that's all. So, so okay. So once you've done NS1 and you've cleaned up uh, some noise, it's like, what do we do then? What what's what's in this bundle from that point on that helps us get a better sound? Right. So after the NS1, then I might look at the Greg Wells uh, voice centric plugin. So this being kind of an all in one plugin voice centric, centered around the voice, enhancing the way the voice sounds. This is not only, I'm gonna show an application here in a podcast that I used to produce, uh, one that I produced of myself for myself, fun one. And so I'm gonna show it in the example of podcast, but this is also can be used for vocals in a song. Uh, and, and we'll dive into that. It's got many applications. So this is similar to the One Knob series. If any of you are familiar with that, as you can see, there is one main knob here. However, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I see a few more. Yes, there are a few more. So again, based off of it, but again, the simplicity in mind that this will enhance your voice with all the, the thought processes, the other 
things behind the scenes. So the three main elements within this plugin, uh, basic EQ, compression, and then DSing. I know a lot for beginners when I first started, even compressors alone, wrapping my head around, well, do I want a fast attack for this? Do I want a slower, what's the ratio? EQing the voice, uh, sibilance, how do I DS properly? All of this is taken care of behind the scenes in this plugin. And again, it makes it a one-stop shop for all of that, uh, condensing your workflow, but then also speeding up your workflow as well. Okay, so uh, I see input on the left and I see a really big light between input and level. So how do people know when something is actually working in this plugin? Because obviously one of the reasons why we love the One Knob series and also the Artist Signature series, and this is kind of like a mixture of both, is because you get an awful lot of result out of not really needing to understand how to dig into that amount of experience. Exactly. So this, much like a lot of our artist signature series plugins, are made just to make your life simpler. And that being here with this input fader right here, we have a light here on input level that will go anywhere from green to red. And essentially, you just want to adjust your input level that so that you're living not entirely in green, because then you might need to add more gain, but not solid red because then you're giving it too much. You want to ha have it right balanced. I like to keep an eye yellow, orangish kind of thing. You're giving the plugin then the proper amount of level that it needs then to function and process properly so that it sounds the way it's intended to on the output. All right, so let's have a listen. Right, so here's, I'm gonna solo my voice and we're gonna listen to this. I do have the NS1 engaged behind this. Now that we've talked about it, I'm gonna play my voice dry and then I'll pull up a preset and we'll begin to work with it. But here's the thing. This quote obviously is popular. Most of us think it's from Walt Disney. However, I'm gonna read you this. Imagineer Tom Fitzgerald had this. So we hear my voice, it's a little low, it's a little boomy. Um, you're naturally seeing this going, but it is bypass. What I started with in here, and you can see right here, we now have a voice podcast preset and as I click on this, you can see some things reset. I do really quick want to touch on, I'm mentioning presets. All of our plugins have a huge list of presets that we think and pretty much know that you are going to be using this plugin for. And we've gone and done a lot of the work for you in that regard. They may not be the perfect solution. They might be good starting boards. As you can see, the plugin changed for me when I recalled the preset, but this plugin in particular in another plugin that we're gonna be talking about later, before yesterday, there were some presets that were not in there. So if you already That's do cool. have these plugins, you're gonna to wanna to go to Wave Central and make sure that you update your plugins so that you then do get these additional presets. That's the great thing about Wave Central and making sure your apps are up to date that we're constantly doing new things and you get that, you get to reap the benefits of that. So thank you for having these plugins and Let's carry on. So, all right. All right. So one of the things I've noticed is that was super quiet as well. So right. um, let's, I mean, let's remind people that this is not about uh, a quiet broadcast. This is a problem with a lot of audio. And what this plugin is actually going to help you do is bring that level up. So hit exactly. it, Ryan. All right. So now I've engaged the GW. But here's the thing. This quote obviously is popular. Most of us think it's from Walt Disney. However, I'm going to read you this. I'm so we already hear it get louder. Now keep an eye on this GR, standing for gain reduction. That's talking about our compressor as I increase the intensity here on this knob. But here's the thing. This quote obviously is popular. Most of us think it's from Walt Disney. However, I'm going to read you this. Imagineer Tom Fitzgerald had this to say to legend. So you might've been able to hear when I increased the intensity, we got a little bit more presence in my voice. We right. controlled the dynamics. You might've heard that kind of get compressed. Uh, our, the S's aren't in your face as much. One of the ways I like to make sure that I'm getting a proper level to, you might see here in my track right here, I, I get a little bit louder than my average talking voice. I might just play it and see how that translates in my input, make sure that's not clipping. And then I have know I have a good signal going into this plugin. And then I can also hear how that compressor is working as well when I hear the difference between these lower parts and this higher part. So take a listen. He says, quote, I am very familiar with that line because I wrote it. 
it was written specifically for to look at that you know you have yourself guess you can't necessarily predict these all the time you don't want to pencil through automation on clip gain or your volume automation this handles it for you and it sounds natural it sounds smooth because it's also including the eq and yes are within it so they're all cohesive all within this that's very cool. Okay, so now you also mentioned, I mean, this plugin obviously was designed in cooperation with Greg Wells, probably one of the, the, the most famous recording and mix engineers out there. Um, so this is a bit like having Greg Wells over your shoulder, kind right. of like telling you what to tweak. And um, it's it's basically, it's going to make you sound better regardless. So... 100%. Okay, cool. Um, Ryan, do me a favor. Just uh, just bring up your Pro Tools output just a bit if you can. It's like yeah. I think the net's playing some messy games with us, so I just want to make sure everybody can hear what we're doing. Beautiful. Okay, so that's another plugin that we can talk about another time. This All right. might segue us, however, to, the, I, I believe, the next one that we are going to talk about. Absolutely. Um, so... Go for it, because I know which one you're going to mention. <laughs> so we're talking about levels, loudness. Let's talk about perceived loudness and the difference between levels. Um, we just released a new plugin, Playlist Writer. This plugin, I believe, working in post-production for nearly a decade, something like this, having this sooner would have been a lifesaver, not only for I'm mixing podcasts, I'm mixing uh audio for video, uh, talking heads with the music track underneath, or nowadays so relevant live streaming, you might have music in the background or you're thrown to videos. This plugin will help, it, it will be your best friend from now on out. And the, the main difference between something like this and maybe a vocal writer, you might say, well, okay, there's vocal writer, right? What's the difference? Vocal That's actually writer. one of the questions I'm seeing on, on the chat is like, if I've already got, you know, one of the writing plugins, why would I benefit from bass writer? So that's actually a really good subject. Right. So, I mean, short answer, just look at the names, vocal writer, bass writer, and then playlist writer. They were built and designed with different algorithms in mind, tailored more suited toward those things. So vocal writer is always going to be very superior in tailoring a single vocal to be the best that it can when it comes to that level. Same with bass writer, those algorithms, there's different frequencies involved. Playlist writer then does a phenomenal job at more complex frequency spectrum content, like a full stereo mix with the whole frequency spectrum represented. Also, this deals with perceived loudness as opposed to uh, dB energy. So there's a difference we, you know, that's a whole nother discussion, but there is a difference between the perceived energy within your meters and the perceived loudness, how we hear things. This helps with how we hear things. Okay, so um, one of the questions that's coming up a lot is, can this be used in, obviously it can be used in the studio, can this be used for, uh, say, live streams and live podcasts as well? 100%, absolutely. And that's where I actually see this being a very popular tool for such. So, for example, uh, I used to work for a church called Elevation Church. We have a live stream on the weekends. There are times where you've got hosts and they've got a music bed underneath them. Sometimes those music tracks, they change in levels. Sometimes you throw it to videos. The videos may be inconsistent in how they're mixed, whether someone there makes it or there's a video coming from someone else. If you put that on a bus where all these tracks are feeding, it's going to ensure that all of these levels coming out are perceived to the your audience, your listeners perceived exactly the same. So your audience isn't at home going, oh, oh, turn this down, oh, turn it up. It's pulling them out of that experience that you want them to have. This is going to help do that and save your, your broadcast engineer and the, cool. the person so that they can do their job better without having to worry about writing gain on various things. So I have a question from uh, online. Mark is asking, I've been using Arvox and Vocal Rider for my podcast production. How do these new plugins compare? Now, obviously, uh, Arvox is a really solid plugin. Yes. And so is Vocal Rider. So how does that compare? Well, 
we're going to get into that here a little bit later too and how i've essentially used this plugin so naturally we've seen we've talked about the ns1 and greg wells and i have that both on my voice and my co-host scott his voice um, and i had this clip as an example of ns1 but these are then all going to a dialogue bus where i have this instance of play this writer right now it's bypassed so this for me again you've got compressors and vocal writer but that isn't tailored for again like a perceived loudness those are great maybe for individual vocals but as you can see i have this on a bus of all my dialogue all my vocals my voiceovers everything vocal speech wise this is going to level them out together so there might be instances where one person's one person is talking he's super soft and then all of a sudden both of us start screaming and laughing this is going to help with that again with how we perceive it on the other end and then there are other instances where this is maybe on the music your master bus we'll get into that here later. so give us so give us some examples let's let's hear how this works because i think that's what people really want here is let's Absolutely. let's put it through its paces so here it is bypass you're going to see as i mentioned before very low voice we get loud Listen before. And now they, if you say it, the, the, past, the character attendant will say, Andy's off, to, off at college. Like, right? <laughs> I love that. Do you have that part? Uh, or did I teach you something? You taught me something. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're doing <laughs> <It's> this first. <laughs> okay, so that's how it was before. Now I'm going to engage this, unbypass it. And I have started from, again, talking about presets. There was one on here, vocal podcast. So this is tailored for the loudness. Uh, standard for that. And all I've done was throw it on, made sure the input is tailored around what I need. Once I engage it, keep an eye here on this gain slider, if you will. You're going to see that move again as we get softer. It might bring it up. As we get louder, it's going to tailor it down in a very uh, non obvious way to our ears. And now they, the, if you say it, the, the cast, the character attendant will say, Andy's off to off at college, like, right? <laughs> I love that. Do you have that part? Uh, or did I teach you something? You taught me something. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're doing That's this first. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, it was true, but of so you can see Scott's getting a little quiet, rides it up. We start getting loud, rides it down, and you notice the overall dialogue increase as well, bringing it to that target that we are aiming for. That's really cool. Okay, so I've got another question here. Um, is obviously we've talked about the fact that this is amazing for live streaming as well as in audio posts, but there's a really good question here. Is this good just for professional microphones? Um, uh, or is this something that these plugins are they something that can be applied when people are using like the built in microphone on like their laptop or uh, their, their computer or their little, little USB microphones? I mean, this is dealing with level. So anytime you want consistent level, yeah, I would say so. Okay, beautiful. So it's good for live streaming. It's good for post-production uh, and producing your podcasts, etc. So now when we get to a point of we've got our vocals, we've got our music, um, it's like I, I'm fairly positive that there's going to be some challenges sometimes when you've got a lot of music in there and you're dumping lots of different music tracks in there as well. Does this help when we're dealing with something like that, when there's loud music and vocals going on? Let me tell you what, so much yes. This is a, a huge thing. I know when I started learning mixing, a lot of what is done so much in all the content in the world today, whether it's commercials, vlogs, anything, you typically have your voice with a music bed underneath it. Now you might assume it's like, okay, just bring the volume down, you're good to go. In doing this the best way, there's so many steps behind the scenes. You have to potentially worry about EQ to carve out where your voice sits in. Uh, again, there's difference between your metered energy and your perceived loudness. This plugin is your one-stop shop solution. You can see here, I've got it pulled up. I've got an instance that we can listen to where I've got a music bed underneath our voice. And again, starting with the powerful presets that we have, there already is a music under voice that is already gonna know. And especially if I've already got Playlist Writer on all my voices, 
you know that blend between the two, the, the difference, the ratio between dialogue and music is going to be well represented when I'm staying in the same family of playlist writer, especially. So let's take a listen to the dialogue with just the music bed underneath it, not doing anything uh, level wise, and then I'll engage playlist writer and you can not only see and hear the difference, but I'll also point out something else once we get there. Take a listen. And let us know also, did you like this? Did you have fun? Did you learn something? Because that was the point. And we hope so. You know what would be awesome? To do future episodes of this. So right now it sounds like a music track with uh, some annoying chatter in the background. Well, that's kind of the opposite of what we want, right? So loaded up the music under voice preset, unbypass it, and now let's take a listen. And let us know also, did you like this? Did you have fun? Did you learn something? Because that was the point. And we hope so. You know what would be awesome? To do future episodes of this, but have people- Right, so now we sound like we're immersed in the show the way we're intended to be. Holy One other thing- Holy <laughs> I know, I know, right. So, and, and the difference between maybe this and say, well, hey, well, can I just like bring the volume down on my music track? Well, you potentially could, however, there's a way I've kind of designed this specifically for people maybe to, to learn. So you can see I have two BG track channels with Playlist Writer on it, but then I also have it sending to a bus too. This is so that the Playlist Writer can work on the music track, but then if you get to the end of a segment here and you might wanna bring up the music, you can have that happen on your bus. So Playlist Writer still evening out the sound of that music that, that we perceive, but then you can still have control over that if you want to in your show. But look at how this clip of music, it obviously to our eyes, the waveform is smaller. I've clipped gained this next track up 60 dB and you can see it's substantially louder. Take a look here at this gain slider here on Playlist Writer. And just look at it take the wheel for you in an instance such as this did you like this did you have fun did you learn something because that was the point and we hope so you know it'd be awesome to do future episodes of this but have people send in Ooh. their mythical or magical i like questions it. i like it did that you, would be amazing did you hear that you just heard how to make scott so happy that he will did you see that you see this oh wow <laughs> again so whether you're producing a podcast, no more automating differences between your music tracks. If you've got a live stream, you don't have to worry about this now. Oh, all of a sudden now we can't hear our host because that thing's distracting behind us. So I have a question from uh, the chat underneath this video from Logan. Is Playlist Rider inserted on each track or is it on an output bus? And where does it get its inputs to determine the volume? little bit of yes to all of that. <laughs> so like I said, I have Playlist Writer here on my dialogue bus. So this bus is fed by these tracks. So anything then will then just be the input of that Playlist Writer. And then as I just talked about with this background of music tracks, I do have two tracks where I can, if I want to overlap some music tracks or blend between Here's a good example where I go from this track to this track to this track, just for the sake of fades and whatnot. Um, I'm having it control the music, but again, if I do want to, if I had this on my bus and then tried to automate that, it might be fighting itself. So that's an instance where I chose to have it on an individual track as opposed to a bus. And then yes, then we would have it, we'll talk about it later, maybe on a master bus to ensure your entire mix is meeting these loudness standards that are extremely important when it comes to anything broadcast, podcast, Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, they all have their standards. And if you don't meet them, you could find that your mix then is being overly compressed, treated on the other end that you might not want. That's a very good point. It's like one of the things that uh, I think a lot of people do struggle with is the fact that it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or a professional. Um, you, you do have to understand that there is a bit of a penalty sometimes for if things are the wrong level, those platforms are going to penalize you without actually telling you they're penalizing you. They're just going to compress it. So let's talk about the last plugin, the uh, WLM Plus. Now, 
this is a plugin, uh, uh, guys and girls. It's like there's a couple of videos that um, I, amongst other people at Waves, have done videos for, which are available on the Waves website, on the product page for this specific plugin, and also on uh, our video platforms. This plugin, when you first look at it, does look fairly intimidating, does it not? It sure does. So can we unintimidate it for a second? Let's talk about, so talk to us about exactly how simple this plugin is to use. Right, well, first of all, Waves Loudness Meter. Meter, that's all it is. It's a meter. The w Loudness Meter Plus gives you a little extra parameters to, again, try and do what we do best and make it a one-stop shop to simplify your process, your workflow. So this, again, is loudness. It's perceived loudness. It's different than you look at your master bus, oh, it's just, Staying at zero the whole time, we're good to go. Not exactly. Again, we perceive things differently. It's a different scale, different algorithm. And so this is tailored to meter what we're outputting. Right now, you can see I have it, the last plug in here on my master bus. And this is helping me see visually that I am meeting those standards in which I have set it to do so. And when I say set it to do so, you can see right here at the top, Apple podcast slash music. So anything going to Apple, this is the standard that it needs to meet. And again, I found that in our lovely preset panel. And again, I want to point out specifically this Apple podcast music preset was a new preset that we added just, I think, yesterday. When it's, it's actually funny out. because I just got a question online from Tim on that one. Thank you for that, Tim. Uh, Tim says, are there loudness presets for various mediums like Netflix, YouTube, uh, Spotify, etc., and boom, Tim, there you there go. You're are. welcome. <laughs> it's all all your major standards. So Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Netflix. The list goes on. Now the cool thing about this, um, obviously, we have a platform called Wave Central. So if you already have this specific plugin, um, uh, then if you update, there will be an update for you in Wave Central, and you will get these new presets that we've yep. just added to this. Absolutely. So, um, so first of all, so we've got short term, we've got long term. So let's maybe dig into one of uh, pick the maybe the Apple or the Spotify one and talk about how yeah. those make it easier for people and why they don't need to worry about how complicated this can look and how intimidating it can look. Exactly. So you've got these three huge windows here: short term, long term, range. This is basically giving you uh, a a number, a chart out of the average of your entire piece's uh, loudness. Short term being just that, a shorter period of time, maybe about 10 seconds. Long term being a longer term average, at least within over 30 seconds. And the range being that loudness unit range, almost that dynamic range in loudness units. That's what the LU stands for. Um, and then you've got the, the scales down here to show that as well while you're playing. Um, and it's just that, a meter to help you identify that. This green check in the long term is what you want to see to know that your mix is meeting that standard. So anything that you do, I like to have this pulled up on every single mix that I do, period, ever. Everything that I do, whether it's music, audio post, podcast, I'm using this plugin, at least as a point of reference to make sure that my perceived loudness is consistent. And the best way to find this long term is you're just going to want to have it up and maybe find an average piece of your production, your music, your podcast, and just let it play for at least 30 seconds. Find that long term average. And so maybe let's give that a shot right here with like this chunk of audio right here. We'll let it play and we'll watch it work as it tells us what's what's going on in the short term, the instantaneous loudness, how it's averaging out in our long term and giving us a, a sense of the range. This button right here, reset, will reset all these parameters so we can start with a fresh slate and know that our meters are telling us what we're wanting it to in this section. All right, let's do it. That's that's pretty crazy I, if that's true. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. 
Because I've heard it before. And I found it on the internet. <laughs> and the internet's always yeah, true. but I've never heard anyone talk about some storage facility of cats. Because my fiance magic, would man. want that job. <laughs> I'm telling you, she would be all about that. Yeah, I work at Disney World. Oh, what's your what's your, what's your your role? Oh, I'm, I'm cat the, wrangler. I'm the cat manager. <laughs> I manage cats. So that means they'd have to not only let these cats loose at night, but they have to go and catch <laughs> yes. these cats, Ryan. Yes, that would be the hard part. But we all know that Disney's really good at training animals. They train the horses not to be spooked. So you can see within this section, my short term's bouncing around minus 16, and that being the standard that Apple Podcast Music has, minus 16 dB. My long term check is perfect. It's green check, it's showing minus 16. And this range I've found typically the smaller, the better. You don't want your mix to be necessarily all over the place. I like to keep a situation in my mind. I mix podcasts a lot. And, and where do people more often than not listen to podcasts, except for this day and age, typically in a car, you're on your way to work, you're on your way home. That's how I found myself listening to podcasts so much over the past years. Now you're driving. If someone starts to get quiet, all of a sudden the mix gets quiet. You want to you're going to reach and turn it up or all of a sudden it's loud. You're going to reach, turn it down. You're distracted. It's pulling you out of driving. It's pulling you out of the content that you're listening to. Keeping this loudness unit like range more concise, smaller number is going to prevent your listener from distractions and keep it a more cohesive experience for them. One thing I do want to point out here that you might have noticed, I moved my mouse over at one point, the benefit of the Waze loudness meter plus there also is just Waze loudness meter, no plus, brings in this true peak limiter and this, this gain slider right here. So you might notice right now it already says minus one because I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of making sure that with this slider that my mix then does meet this standard. The great thing about the WLM plus is it has this in it as that one-stop shop. So for instance, if your mix is a little bit too loud, golly, now I have to go back and bring the levels of everything else down before this. That would be a hassle, wouldn't it? Well, again, we try to make it easy for you with bringing this gain in here, but I can even show you a little quick trip that makes it even easier. Let me replay this clip with my gain here set at zero, and you'll notice it might be a little bit too loud this time. That's that's pretty crazy if that's true. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. Because I've heard it before. And I found it on the internet. And the internet's always <laughs> yeah, true. But I've never heard anyone talk about some storage facility of cats because my cause fiance magic, would man. want that job. <laughs> I'm telling you, she would be all about yeah, that. Yeah, I work at Disney World. Oh, what's your what right? So you see we're minus 15. You see we're in the momentary where this blue bar is. We're in red a lot. So we're gonna have to bring our mix down. Well, if you look here at this trim button here, it already says a minus 0 0.6. Check this out. If I just hit this, boom, it moved the gain slider down to what it has figured out is the difference between where our mix is and where it should be to meet this loudness standard. That's pretty incredible to me. That is pretty incredible. Okay, so let's jump to another question here. Um, Mark, from a house of worship position, uh, which WLM preset would you use for like a multi-platform broadcasting, uh, living as one, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Subsplash, Roku, Apple TV? Is the one that you would use for that? Um, I mean, there, if, if you're going to YouTube, there is a, a, a YouTube specified loudness standard already. Uh, I would probably, if you're going to all these different platforms, I would probably do a little bit of research and find the one that is perhaps maybe the requires the softest of the bunch and then kind of tailor towards that. Okay. Uh, that way you're not mixing too loud. And then on those other platforms where you're exceeding, it's squashing it even more, making it sound a little bit too unnatural. Okay, so what have we got left? So we've done NS1, we've cleaned up all that annoying air conditioning hiss and rattle, we've improved the vocals and everything with uh, EQ and compression with one big knob with Greg Wells, we've done Playlist Writer, we've talked about levels. Let's just go back to Playlist Writer and, and talk Let about us. why you've got it on the master bus. Because <laughs> like, I see a few questions about that. It's like, do you have it on a master bus as well as... So... 
And also, there's still a lot of people asking and curious about how this is different to something like Vocal Rider. So I think this is pretty much going to answer their questions. Yes, absolutely. Again, we're talking about perceived loudness here and this being able, an algorithm being able to handle an entire frequency spectrum, a lot of content going on all at once and averaging out the total of that mix to then be a, a soft, unnoticeable, consistent loudness on the other end. So yes, I do have this on my master before my loudness meter to make sure that my entire mix here meets that standard, then eliminating me essentially from needing to do any other gain staging here than after that. As we've talked about before, yes, we have a, a list of presets. And so look at that. I've already got a preset for this playlist writer for Apple Podcast Music. And then yes, there is one for YouTube, Spotify as well. So I've loaded this with the Apple Podcast Music right here before my loudness meter plus. I'll engage it, and let's listen to, again, a section in this podcast where there are a lot of dynamics. We have soft dialogue, go into loud dialogue, and you'll see, again, this gain slider up top here, adjust accordingly to make sure that our entire mix, the entire mix, including all the dialogue, the music behind it, later on, I might have some sound effects, the entire thing represented coming out at the very end of our master is going to translate and meet those loudness standards. That's cool. That would have been a cool. Did we mention that in our? Uh, we did. Um, yeah. The uh, extinct, extinct attractions. Yeah. Yep. That's right, because we were talking about the drones. Yes. <laughs> because I told you there is. You were like, oh, you That's can't right. be in the drone. <laughs> Scott and later I texted proved you me wrong. Like, a couple of days later, apparently like, they now have a drone that can occupy someone <laughs> inside of it. So it's basically a mini helicopter. With I want to listen to your podcast stuff. now. <laughs> It's pretty great, and there's a pretty uh, grooving track behind it, too. Uh, Wink. <laughs> so, so I have a question for you, and, and it's a question that's coming up a, a, a couple of times here. So I see there's some presets in Playlist Rider that uh, look very, very similar to presets in WLM Plus um, with the minus 14, the minus 16, etc. They're not the same thing, though, these plugins, are they? they, 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 nope. they they're, they're best used together, correct? Exactly. Just like I have shown here on my master bus, this would be a perfect scenario. This is what I would do on any mix, basically. I want to ensure that the shaping of my mix is taken care of in terms of loudness. And then the meter being that final check of, hey, yes, I am showing you that your mix is qualified and good to go for the output that you have desired. Again, you've got these green checks, and then you then even have ways to export a csv file so that s some stations some broadcast networks might require that you send them a file showing them physically with their eyes that yes your mix has met these standards and this has the power to do that so uh, one question um i'm sure i haven't seen it yet but i'm i'm i'm, I'm scrolling madly is mm. Say, for example, you're recording off uh, uh, like a two hour podcast is like, do you have to you don't have to look at this in the entire way through and can like monitor it for every minute, do you? It's like there's no, no exactly. OK, exactly. so how does how does that work? Yeah, kind of like I talked about before. Uh, obviously, if you have the playlist writer here overall, your entire two hour mix you know that it's going to do its job and it's going to do it the way it's supposed to according to the preset or the parameters you set within yourself. Side note, as I just mentioned that, should you make any changes to tailor it maybe a little differently for your needs, you then of course have the ability to save your presets and then recall them yourself. So you're not limited to only what we think you need to know from our perspective, but you can make it your own, and that's the power of this. This is art we're creating. So you can create what you want. There are no rules in art, maybe guidelines, but art is your own expression. Absolutely, so, no such thing as rules. So there's a couple more right. questions, and then we, we'll, we'll probably close this off. Uh, Jamel, and Jamel, I hope that's, uh, I, I, I pronounced that right. Would you use this plugin for uh, a playlist writer for maybe an Inia mix? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be... Fantastic, I would assume, especially like if they have 
a submix of all the instruments, yeah, keep it consistent. So if there is a, a moment on stage where it's, it's soft, you don't want to be distracted and turn your pack up or it's getting too loud, you want to turn it down, this would be a great way, again, perceived loudness, how you perceive it, it would keep it consistent. Maybe there might be some time, I mean, you'd have to use your discretion of the actual room stage volume that might counter it depends on the ears you have are using headphones custom in-ears that block out that stage volume that's kind of case by case but at least going into your ears you know that it's going to be consistent in the way that you perceive it so i have a question here um from uh david and and i think david's main question is is with playlist writer is like do you have to do any side chaining here or um is there any kind of like ducking room i mean this plugin actually doesn't do that it's like it does it all for you pretty much doesn't it yeah it's as easy as slapping it on done so there you have it the content creator audio toolkit NS1, amazing for getting rid of all of the things like background rumble, uh, air conditioning, things like that, traffic noise, especially as all of us are right now where we are. And then you've got Greg Wells, voice centric, which is pretty much one knob to help you improve your EQ and your compression all at the same time. This brand new plugin from Waves, Playlist Rider, which does so much. Uh, I think what we just demoed there with Ryan was pretty damn cool. And then of course, WLM plus loudness meter. Now put all these things together and you have a really powerful toolkit. So I do hope that you will consider taking a look at the upgrade parts if you have one of those existing plugins. But definitely remember that we do have uh, trial versions available. Try them out on your audio or on your live stream and hopefully we'll see you next time when we do one of these. Thanks so much.